Oh, it's already on. Okay. Hey guys, it's Dana and it's Tuesday and we're going to talk about money. And today I wanted to talk about some of the things that Dave Ramsey says that are inconsistent. All right, so I have been listening to Dave Ramsey for years, years, every single day. I adore Dave Ramsey. I do, and I consider him to be a role model in my life. And it's interesting to me because I've been listening for so many years, in the beginning, when I first started listening, I really thought, you know, certain things he said, that was like Bible, right? Like I was like, oh, that's the way. That's what Dave says, that's the way. And there are a lot of people out there who call themselves Dave Ramsey purists. So whether or not you're a purist, meaning that you 110% follow his baby steps, follow all of his advice, you don't veer from it. And then there are those people who are not purists who kind of do his plan, what well, he would say, you're not really following his plan then, you're doing your own plan, which he does say is fine, it's your life, it's your choice, you get to decide, but then don't say you're following his plan if you're not really following his plan. He gets very upset about that on his radio show. Uh, he yells at a lot of people about that, he says, well, then and you're doing your plan, not my plan. And he a lot of times hangs up on them. And he uh, gets very upset with that. So um, as I was saying, in the beginning, I would take everything that he said, and I would, you know, that was that's the way because that's what Dave says. And then over the years, as I listen, sometimes I hear him give different, a little bit of a different answer, depending on who he's talking to. And I think to myself, hmm, uh, that's not what he said before. So then it kind of changes my mind. Now, fundamentally, obviously his baby steps, baby step one, saving a thousand dollars, baby step two, you know, pay off all your all your debts except your house, like the baby steps, you know, he's he is consistent with those with his plan. But certain things, um, he isn't. So um I wanted to talk about that, share some of those things, and so let's get into it. So first off, it's the whole beans and rice thing that I wanted to talk about. I wanna talk about this first. So he always says on his show, um, you're gonna you know, eat beans and rice, rice and beans. Like that's just kind of like what he says to mean that you're gonna live what he calls scorched earth. You're gonna cut back on everything when you are in baby step two, when you're trying to get out of debt, that you're going to eat rice and beans. And so I've heard him, you know, he reads tweets that people say, say, Dave, do you mean really eat rice and beans? And he just like goes, oh, you know, I'm not, it's not literally, you know, it's just, you know, that's just, you know, a saying, it doesn't mean you really eat rice and beans. And then the other day on his radio show, I heard him say, um, he was reading, I guess, another Facebook or something. And he's the same question. Is it really rice and beans? And his answer was different, which I was really surprised. He said, well, actually, it is really rice and beans. And then he was talking about how in certain parts of the country, you know, people really do eat it. And honestly, I really do eat rice and beans. Um, since being on this program, I don't know how that happened. But now I really do eat rice and beans with salsa. And I love it. I do. I love it part of becoming a vegan maybe too. But um, he said, yes, it really is rice and beans. So I was like, oh my gosh, like that's not what he always said in the past. He just like would hammer on those people like they were complete idiots if they asked him that question. And this time he didn't. Obviously he's a human being and over time I know he's probably softens about certain things and it depends on his mood for the day. If he's in a good mood, bad mood, whatever, um, obviously impacts how he responds to these questions, which makes it interesting because some, I mean, obviously from a perspective of listening, you never know what kind of mood he's gonna be in. I actually honestly can tell now from listening for so long if he's in a bad mood, because some days I'm like, wow, he is just not being nice like to anybody who calls in. And other days he's a lot softer and he's more like the Papa Dave style that you that I love, where he's supportive and encouraging and, and he's a lot softer with his answers with people. Even though I love his rants, I prefer when he's kinder to the callers sometimes. Um, so, rice and beans. Now, something else is the debt snowball. Um, I did a previous video that said stop the debt snowball. It made a lot of people angry. I don't think they really understood what I was saying in that video, but um, I have heard Dave tell callers to stop the debt snowball. I have heard those words uh, come out of his mouth 
through the radio and he has said, stop the debt snowball, which is baby step two. Baby step two is the debt snowball. And he says, if you are not current on your debts, on your bills, if you cannot make your minimum payments on just your four walls, if you can't pay for food, water, shelter, clothing, if you can't pay your electric bill, you're having trouble paying that, then don't do baby step two, which is the debt snowball. He says, don't do it until you can get current on all your bills and raise your income, increase your household income so you have more money coming in, So th and then you can press play again on your debt snowball of paying all of your debts, minimum payments, except for your smallest total balance where you throw everything else at that. But you can't do your debt snowball if you can't even get current or just make your minimum payments on all your bills. So you pause it. So your credit score, I really wanna talk about this too. So your credit score, Dave says, very often, very consistently, you don't care about your credit score. Who cares about your credit score? The only reason you would want a credit score is if you want to borrow money. And he's all about not borrowing money, not being a slave. The borrower is slave to the lender. So he says, who cares about your credit score, right? You wanna close your credit cards. You wanna close those down as soon as possible. You wanna cut them up. And I have heard him say though, do not close your credit cards. <laughs> so uh, somebody called in and said that they were gonna be buying a house within six months to a year. And so he said, don't close your credit cards because you don't want your credit score to get hurt because obviously you want a high credit score or a zero credit score. And when you close your accounts, it will lower your credit score. So he said, don't close your accounts until after you make that home purchase because it's gonna hurt your credit score. So, you know, I was like, oh, he's telling somebody not to close their credit cards. <laughs> so are you debt free? This is something that is an interesting question. Uh, Dave has people on his show that do their debt-free screams. You probably heard the debt-free screams if you listen to Dave. They're a pretty big part. They do one an hour. And the debt-free screams are people who uh, call in or go in person and they do their scream. They count down. They do a debt, it's called a debt-free scream if they've paid off all of their debt. And debt meaning usually it's all their debt from baby step two, which was which does not include your house. So you would still have a mortgage a lot of times, which technically then you are still in debt. And I've heard him address this. You know, he has actually said, that is true. You still have debt. You really are not debt free after baby step two, but that they want to rejoice, share in the wins and the milestone of people who have completed debt step to baby step two and uh, celebrate with them. And that's why they do let them do their debt-free scream and how some people come and do their debt-free scream after baby step two. And then they come back and do another debt-free scream after they finish paying off their house. Cause you technically are not really debt-free until you pay off your house. All right, and then this next one is the $1,000 emergency fund. So you hear Dave say, just $1,000, just $1,000 for baby step one. $1,000 for baby step one. And anything else you're supposed to put towards your debt in baby step two. However, I have heard him say to others uh, who have called in that if you know you have something coming up, right? Which this is just common sense. If you know you have something coming up that you're going to have to pay for, then you need to put money aside. So this isn't really an inconsistency exactly, but it's confusing, I think, to people who are just starting out. So you think, oh, just a thousand dollars, that's it. Everything else needs to go towards um, paying down our debt. But if you, you know something's coming up, then in your mind you're thinking, I'm not supposed to have more in my savings account, but what Dave says is you're supposed to budget for it every month, so you put it in your monthly budget. But let's say you put $20 in your monthly budget to go towards, you know, say you know you need a, you have a plumbing repair that you're gonna have to pay $500 for. So you need to get that money together. So you know you have a certain amount of time to do it, so you put $20 per month in your budget to do this plumbing repair. Well, where's that money going? For us, it does go to our savings account. It's going into our savings account. 
Um, so you might have more than $1,000 in your savings account for household repairs or for your car repair. You know that you're going to have car repairs every year, oil changes, inspections like we have in Pennsylvania. So you know how much that probably is going to be. So every month you need to budget money for those car repairs and you might be taking that set amount and putting it into your savings account, which means you're going to have like a padding in your savings account um, that is earmarked for certain things that are known. You know those things are coming up, but you're going to have more than $1,000 in your savings account, most likely, if you're putting it over there. Or you're just going to let it float in your checking account. Um, but I don't like to do that. I don't like things floating and checking because then I feel like we're just like, oh, extra money. So bottom line is that Dave Ramsey is trying to teach us to think, which I love. So he is always saying that he is first and foremost a teacher and that his medium is radio. That's his platform. But that he is trying to teach us and I believe that. So I think that we have to all try to remember that his advice might be different for our own personal situation because it's personal. It's personal finance. So we have to try to take his baby steps and not change them, but remember that you have your own unique situation going on. So we have to think for ourselves um, during each individual situation that we might have to make a decision for. So I'd love to know if you listen to Dave Ramsey, what inconsistencies have you heard from him over the years? If you've been a long time listener like myself, uh, maybe there are some things you heard, um, or maybe not. Maybe you think he is just black and white. <laughs> and that's fine too. Um, if it's your first time here, be sure to subscribe. I'm here every single Tuesday talking all about money. And we are a family of six living in the Philadelphia area. Bye guys.